I interviewed four students who were struggling with IELTS reading and eventually got a band nine so that you can learn exactly how they did it. Interestingly, all four band nine students said the same four things. And that's exactly what we're gonna teach you in this video. So you can go from struggling with IELTS reading to getting the score that you need more easily. Let's start off with Valentin, who went from a band six in reading to a band nine. Let's hear what he has to say about strategy. Um, I had a big uh, struggle with distraction. I could be easily distracted by uh, true, false, not given questions. And uh, I really hated uh, all the questions related to topics. So when you should place topics for a uh, different part of the text, I really hate them. So what Valentin said there was that he found certain question types distracting. And he talked about hating true, false, not given and hating matching headings questions. And this is very, very common for students who deserve a very high score. Like they deserve a band eight or a band nine, but they're getting a low score. They're getting a five or a six. And the reason is, is that they hate certain questions which means that they go into the test and when they see the question, they're very distracted, as Valentin said, and that wastes a lot of time and leads to lower scores. So in terms of overall strategy, what we did with Valentin was give him a step-by-step -step strategy for true, false, not given, and for matching headings, and this removed all of the fear and ensured that he got all of those questions correct, which improved his overall score. And don't worry, we will give you those strategies at the end of this video, and the other students that got band nine will show you what they did for those questions as well. But overall, we want to remove any distractions or any fear from the test so that we can perform to our best ability on test day. Now let's check out what Priyanka said about strategy. So she went from band 7.5 to a band nine. Each type of question has a trick, like for filling the blanks or just answering a question, uh, you can skim the paragraph. You should not read whole paragraph, but like for the true and false and match the heading, questions like that, you have to read the paragraph. So yeah. you should focus your time over there instead of the matching or filling the blanks. So what Priyanka said was each question has a trick. Now I corrected her on that and said, you know, what you really mean is a strategy. So there are no tricks that you can employ, but you can employ step-by-step -step strategies for each different type of question. And this is something that every single band nine student that we interview, they all say the same thing. You must have a strategy for each of the different types of question. You learn that strategy, you apply it on test day, and then you're able to do what Valentin and Priyanka did, which was go from you know, band six to a band nine or 7.5 to a band nine. And don't worry, she's going to go into more detail on the matching heading strategy later in this video. But let's check out what Jaswant said in the video. And he went from a band 6.5 to a band 9, a huge increase. You don't have to have any good knowledge and vocabulary, especially for the reading part. Mm -hmm. So the main skills you needed are, you know, skimming and scanning and understanding mm -hmm. uh, different formats of the exam. I mean, like different question types. And as you can see, he agrees with Priyanka. What he says is that each different type of question is testing different things. They are different, therefore you need a unique strategy for each of the different question types. This is a huge difference between students who get like a band 5.5, 6, 6.5, and the students that get band eight and nine. Generally, the lower level students will have one strategy for all of the different types of questions, whereas band eight and nine students will understand that each question is different and they will learn and apply a unique strategy to each of the different question types. And we're gonna give you all of those at the end of this video. Finally, let's check out Shrabani. Shrabani went from about 6.5 to about nine. And what she says in this clip, blindly follow the strategies. Totally, I would uh, say that all the strategies that I learned from IELTS Advantage, I just blindly followed those strategies. I used to be highly confused and it used to take so much of my time thinking that where is the answer? But when I got the strategies and I blindly just followed the strategies and that, uh, that was really helpful. So band nine students don't just look at strategies. They don't look at a few YouTube videos or read a couple of books and look at the strategies. 
they memorize the strategies, they practice the strategies so that on test day, they can blindly follow them. They are not deviating at all from exactly what the strategy does. You might think that this is a lot of work, but it's all about putting in the work before your test so that your test is easy. When Shirbani talks about blindly following the strategies, what she is really saying is that she didn't even have to think about the strategies. She had practiced them so many times that when she saw each question, she automatically, without even thinking, applied those strategies. This makes test day much, much easier because you are not thinking about what to do on the test. You're automatically applying everything, which reduces stress, reduces cognitive load, and not only improves your reading, but also means you have far more energy to apply to the other three skills you will be doing on test day. Now let's look at what the students say more specifically about the two most difficult, the two most challenging question types, matching headings and true false not given. So what Priyanka says about matching headings is this. I always used to do is like, I always read the questions and all the headings which question is asking us to do, but we should not do that. We should just straight away go to the passage and read the passage. And uh, with each passage, we should give a particular idea of that pa passage or write somewhere that idea. Mm -hmm. So that in the last, you can match it. What's mm -hmm. your idea and what's given in question. So this advice shows you how important strategy is. If you were not following this strategy, you would be getting lost because what most students do is they look at the headings, the questions first, and then they read the passage. That means that they're going to waste a lot of time and they're going to be looking for things that are not there and they're going to get highly confused, not know what to do. We do exactly the opposite. We taught Priyanka to look at each of the question paragraphs first and actually create their own headings for each paragraph. And then you look at the list of headings and it's much, much, much easier because all you have to do then is match your headings with the list of headings in the question there. Now let's check out what Jaswant has to say about matching headings. I loved your tips, Chris, you know. Before I used to start, you know, just going through the uh, paragraphs and you know I used to do all that but then you told me that you know you know, don't see the headings before even starting the paragraph right mm -hmm. so that's the one key important that helped me to you know score the perfect uh, yeah. nine in the reading exam so exactly the same advice exactly the same strategy and when you see successful people doing the same thing there's a quote success leaves clues whenever you see successful people in any walk of life doing the same things, you should copy them. Now let's check out what Shrubani has to say about matching headings. When it comes to matching headings, we have to read the passage first, make our own headings, and then match those headings with the headings given. So, uh, you know, practicing these strategies and remembering those strategies, this takes a couple of, uh, sometimes, need a lot of slow, slow practice. So not only did Shrubani give advice exactly the same as the other two band nine students. She also gave advice about how she learned the strategies because band nine students, as I said before, don't look at a strategy once, they memorize it. And she talked about slow practice. Slow practice is when you get some real practice tests and you don't try and do them as quickly as possible. You don't do them under exam conditions. You open up the book, you find the question type that you want to work on and you work on learning the strategy, not on getting all the questions correct. It doesn't matter at that stage. That is why we call it slow practice. You might take 20 minutes for one question or one hour for one question because your focus is on learning. Your focus is not on getting up to exam speed. So very, very good advice from another band nine student there. So I'll give you that matching heading strategy in a lot more detail at the end of the video for free, but let's see what they have to say about true, false, not given, because it is completely different. So let's check out what Shrubani has to say about true, false, not given. For true, false, uh, not given, for example, um, I used to read the passage first and uh, 
for not given questions i used to be highly confused and it used to take so much of the, my time thinking that where is the answer but when i got the strategies and i blindly just followed the strategies and that uh, that was really helpful so as you heard there shubani would read the text first for true false not given and this would lead to a huge amount of confusion and this has knock on effects on the rest of your test because if you think about it if you get lost with one type of question, it wastes a lot of time and it also really increases stress. So a lot of students that we work with deserve a band 8, 8.5, 9, but because they mess up one part of the test, that means that the rest of the test is messed up as well because you're running out of time, you're very stressed. When you're stressed, your brain is not working optimally. So it is really, really important that you establish what your weaknesses are and have a strategy for each of the different question types. So let's check out what Priyanka has to say about true, false, not given and the differences between what is true, what is false and what is not given. If you have read the paragraph first and then you are reading the question, then it's really easy to know that it's not given in the paragraph. So you should mark it not given. So what she's saying there is not that she read the text, the paragraph first and then read the questions. She's talking about comparing the paragraph that you think contains the correct information and the question statement. And if you can't find any information in there, then it's not given. And really what band nine students say over and over again is you must develop the confidence to write not given because searching a paragraph for something that is not there is like me telling you to go into the next room and find something that is not there. It's going to take you a huge amount of time and you're going to get lost and you're going to get confused. By practicing the strategy that we'll give you at the end of the video, it gives you the confidence to immediately look and say, okay, this isn't here. I can't find it. Let's move on and not given. And then she says, when something is there. So when something is there, then you have to think about, is it true or is it false? So if it's not there, not given. If there's something in there related to the question statement, then you decide, is it true or is it false? But when uh, something is there and you can correct that sentence, that means it's a false sentence. So what she said there was, if you can look at the text and think, this is wrong, I can actually correct it, I can change it to something that is true, then that is false. Now there are many other ways that you can do that, but that is a very logical way of thinking about it. So first of all, is it there? If it's not there, it's not given. If it is there, then you need to decide, is it true or is it false? If you can correct the statement, then it is false. If you can't correct it, if it's the same, then it is true. Importantly, don't just look at this short part of the video and think that you have mastered true, false, not given questions. You need the strategy and you need to practice it slowly. You need to master it and then apply it on test day. We'll give you that at the end of the video. Now let's move on to time management. It's very common for students to email us and ask us for time management tips. But what band nine students say is completely different from time management tips. Let's have a look at what Priyanka says. Actually, I never faced problem with time management since mm -hmm. I started practicing like from the first day, I was able to complete my test in uh, one hour. So she never faced an issue with time management at all. Does this mean that you can't learn from her? No, because this is reflected in what Jaswan said as well. For reading, I did like more uh, practice. I mean, I was reading some online articles, as you always suggested in the course, like I've been going through and reading BBC articles. Mm -hmm. So that really improved my skills a lot. So he talks here about reading in his spare time. To be honest with you, um, Chris, I was more interested in like, you know, uh, wildlife. So I was reading <laughs> more, more that kind of, you know, uh, things that interested me that will make you to you know I'll uh, read anything with ease right so you don't have to struggle with anything he talks about reading something that he loves reading about wildlife if i find any like new uh, vocabulary so i will make a separate note of it and then here he talks about making notes about new vocabulary what has this got to do with time management 
So both these band nine students were reading in their spare time. They were practicing that skill. They were reading things that they enjoyed. So they were doing it sustainably and regularly. And they were actively reading. They were improving their vocabulary as they were doing it. This means that time management is not an issue at all. You do not improve time management by learning time management tips. You improve time management by becoming better at reading. Let me give you a quick analogy. So Usain Bolt was the fastest man in the world. Is Usain Bolt better at time management than these guys? Are these guys behind Usain Bolt because they don't have the same time management skills? No, Usain Bolt is better at running. These guys are not as good at running as Usain Bolt. Exactly the same with not only the reading test, but also the writing test. Students that get a band nine do not think about time management at all. When I did the real IELTS reading test, I got a band nine in 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I just went to the toilet and then came back and just like, stared at the ceiling. That is not because I did anything magical or looked up top 10 magic time management tips the night before the test. In fact, I was in the pub drinking the night before the test. It's because I'm a native English speaker and I am an IELTS teacher. Of course, I should easily be getting a band nine. But there is one extra thing that band nine students do related to time management that lower level students don't do. So there are three sections in the reading test, section one, section two, section three, and they will get more difficult as you go through them. Let's have a look at what Shrabani has to say about that. What I did, I did some time bounding practice and I checked that each and every section, how much time I'm spending. And I realized that initially I used to spend a lot of time in the section one and section two. So I used to have very little time left for the third section. In an Excel sheet, I marked my times like I'm taking seven minutes. Usually initially I used to take 10 minutes. After that, it came to seven minutes. I told myself that I have to make it finished by five minutes. And uh, so this, this type of practice actually helped me to you know, um, complete the test within time. And Jaswanth says a very similar thing here. So mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, how much time I should allocate for each section. So I try to uh, complete, you know, uh, first two sections in 30 minutes so that you know, I will have plenty of time for my section three, right? So what they understand is because the questions get progressively more difficult, they spend a lot more time on the more difficult questions later on in the test. So most band nine students that we work with tend to not think about, I must spend this number of minutes on each question or this number of minutes on each section. What they generally do is they try to get section one and two done as quickly as possible, correctly, but as quickly as possible. And then that gives them a lot more room, a lot more time at the end to really think and focus in on the last most difficult questions. So to summarize band nine advice, real band nine advice from real band nine students, each question is different and you must have a separate strategy for each of them. True, false, not given and matching headings questions are difficult and can cause problems, but not if you practice them and master them and apply a real strategy to those questions. And then finally, time management tips just don't exist. It's all about improving your reading, your reading skills and your vocabulary. And if you get to that level, band nine is inevitable. It just will happen for you. So what you need to do now is check out this video or this video, it will be here, which gives you every single question type and strategies for all of those. Get some practice questions and practice them slowly until you master them. Don't book the test until you're ready. If you need any help with your preparation, feel free to get in touch.